Blitz, and welcome back for another episode of Kitchen Witchery and Other Spells. Today, it is cold and rainy here in Southern California at the harbor. I would show you the outside, but my window is steamed up because it's warm in here and cold out there and it's raining out there. So today is the day for comfort food. And for me, there is no better comfort food than Pennsylvania Dutch delicacies. And uh, I just, I love Pennsylvania Dutch cooking because that's what I grew up with. And there are some fantastic, fantastic recipes. Um, I know we did uh, Pennsylvania chicken and Dutch, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch chicken and waffles uh, last year at some point in the year. Um, I'll probably link it to this video somehow, probably a little card up in the corner or something like that it says, go here, click here. Um, so today what we're going to make is we're going to make Pennsylvania Dutch pot pie, which I literally learned two weeks ago is actually called slippy pot pie by a lot of people in Pennsylvania. I had never heard that term before, slippy pot pie. Um, I mean, I know the word slippy because it's a word we use all the time. Everything is slippy. Ice is slippy, you know, um, kind of thing. And if you're not familiar with Pennsylvania Dutch, which unless you're from there, you're probably not. Um, Pennsylvania Dutch is an actual kind of dialect of its own. And it's a combination of kind of bastardized German and English. And so, for example, as I was walking with cameraman Ken the other day, I was like, huh, I really wonder what the etymology is for the, for the word slippy. Like, is it, is it a bastardization of a, of a German word? Maybe the German word for slippery. Let me look it up. Yeah, the German word for slippery is richtig, which um, it, the bastardization of that is the word richen, which is what we talk about when people are squirming. Stop richen around in your chair already, kind of thing. So uh, yeah, I have no idea where slippy came from. So if anybody happens to be Pennsylvania Dutch and knows the entomology of these words, I would really be interested to know why it took me moving to California to realize that the word was slippery, not slippy. I've been in California for 17 years, so it's only been 17 years that I didn't know the word was actually slippery. Um, because slippery was something else completely different. Um, you know, roads are slippery when wet, but ice is slippy. I don't know. It's a weird thing. It's just how you hear the words when you're a child. So for Pennsylvania Dutch slippy pot pie, which is actually called slippy pot pie to differentiate it from a, a regular pot pie, which of course is made with a crust and dates back to the medieval times. Um, slippy pot pie is made with pot pie noodles. These happen to be homemade gluten-free pot pie noodles. There is a patrons only, Patreons only video um, on my Patreon that features making these and how to make them using um, the KitchenAid pots, pasta press and, you know, gives you more information about the noodles themselves. You can buy pot pie noodles from Amazon. Um, but they're not going to be gluten-free. So if you need to be gluten-free, you're going to have to make them yourself. Um, anyway, you're going to need pot pie noodles. Now I'm using my mom's recipe, which is to say, we're going to throw a bunch of stuff into the pot and call it a recipe. Uh, so when she makes a uh, slippy pot pie, it does, uh, she's using the store-bought pot pie noodles. And she says she uses half a bag, I think. The um, pot pie noodles come in a 16 ounce bag. It might be 20. I cannot remember. So, um, because I haven't had this in over 17 years. Um, so this is approximately 10 to 11 ounces worth of pot pie noodles. So that's what we're gonna use. Just use the whole thing. Cause I've never made this with this particular with this particular pasta. So we're, we're all gonna have a learning experience here. You will need um, potatoes. Now, depending on, my mom said, depending on how many people you're intending to feed, that determines the number of potatoes you use. I don't know. Um, 
This is two very large potatoes. I remember them being much smaller in my childhood, uh, but you need to have them peeled and they are supposed to be actually sliced in rounds. So I'm pretty sure that we were using um, new potatoes or baby potatoes, something like that, because they were much smaller and they were cut in, in rounds. And they're, they're about that thick, like the... Wow, that's hugely precise, 3 sixteenths. So get your ruler out. And... It's bigger than an eighth and smaller than a quarter. Yeah, it's 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 between an eighth and a quarter inch thick. Uh, so this is two very large potatoes um, that we got in our imperfect produce order specifically for this video. You will need one onion chopped, uh, approximately three carrots, diced, cut, chopped, however you want to do it. These are canned carrots because I, I I ordered carrots. I have no idea where I put said carrots. They are somewhere in Das fridge. And then we use two stalks of celery diced. And um, of course, you will need to cook your chicken breast or thighs, whatever you want to use. Um, my mom was very non-specific in that. She used one chicken breast in her pot pie, but knowing that my mom buys the mutant chicken breasts, I just assumed that it was approximately 14 ounces worth of chicken. So that's what I have here, 14 ounces of chicken breast. Uh, you just, we did a combination of two cups of vegetable stock for uh, two cups of chicken stock, and then probably about a, another cup and a half or so, cup and three quarters of just water and um, boiled the chicken for approximately 15 minutes until it reached the internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Then um, you're supposed to let it cool, but if you've got those bear claw things for some reason, or your Wolverine, or you just use two forks, you can, you can shred it right away. But you want to shred your chicken so that, you know, it's easily spread around. And then for spices, you'll just need salt, pepper, and turmeric. So, um, when you boil your chicken, save your stock. That's hot. Save your stock, and um, you're gonna because you're gonna put everything straight into the stock and and go from there. So we're gonna get things reframed for you. We'll be back in just a moment, and we'll get this party started. Okay, so um, very quickly, Pennsylvania Dutch recipes have very many versions, and that's because they are passed down from generation to generation, and you make adjustments where you need to. In this particular case, the recipe that is being passed down to me is uh, very traditionally Pennsylvania Dutch, which is do this until it's enough. Uh, do this until this happens and you know go the go down the go the go the road down a piece and make a left at the crow's field you know it's it, eh. it's confusing so basically how this is supposed to work is you cook your chicken in your broth you take your chicken out of your broth and you immediately add your vegetables which we did not do um, because we misunderstood and by we I mean so, um, my broth is back up to a boil. And at this point, what you're going to do is you are going to add your vegetables to it, except for the potatoes. So, um, get grief, quarantine hair everywhere, literally. Um, so we're going to add our onion and we're going to add our celery. You would also normally add your carrots at this point, but um, my carrots are already cooked and I don't want mushy carrots. So I'm gonna save the carrots for later, but you, if you were cutting your own carrots, dicing them, whatever, you would add them now so that they get a chance to cook. So the word of mouth handed down to my children version of this recipe is uh, cook the vegetables until they're tender. I don't know how long that's gonna be, but it's gonna be a bit. 
So, uh, we'll come back when these are tender and we can add the, um, the nudes and the, I think we add the nudes, the potatoes. No, I think we just add the nudes. I don't know. I have to look again because I have read this recipe so many times and I still have no idea what I'm doing. I'm like, what? What? Can't we just do steps? No. No, we cannot because we are Pennsylvania Dutch. Now, just because it's fun and I can throw this in here and I can poke fun at myself. Um, the first time I was ever out of the state for any length of time is when I went to my undergrad institution in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. So we drive to Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Spent four and a half years there. Managed cram four years college into five. So uh, we went to Wisconsin. And uh, that's when I learned that nobody outside of Pennsylvania knew what dippy eggs were. And when I learned that chicken and waffles everywhere else meant fried chicken on a waffle with maple syrup, which as we've covered previously is gross. So uh, I was very culture shocked and I was really good in Eng at English in school, elementary school, middle school, high school. I was very good at English. I understood what dangling participles were and I could diagram a sentence like nobody's business. Do they even teach diagramming anymore? It would really help with sentence structure. But anyway, I digress. One day I was extremely tired as I was walking from the main building towards the library to go, because I had to drop my keys to my car at the library for a friend of mine who was gonna borrow my car because I had no time and it needed gas. So I said to my friend who was walking with me, hey, I gotta drop off in the library my keys, I'll catch you up. And the look of horror on their face was priceless as they turned to me and said, I'm sorry, what? Was that English? And I'm like, I have to drop off in the library my keys and I'll catch you up later. I don't understand what you're not understanding here. And they're like, you need to drop your keys off in the library and you'll see me later. Literally what I said, but yes, exactly. Good translation. So, uh, cause I realized that I was that tired that I was speaking Pennsylvania Dutch and that's how we talk in central Pennsylvania. We know things like, uh, Throw the horse over the fence and hay, throw the baby down the stairs this bottle, go the road down and right up your room. Stop riching around in your chair and we'll be right back. All right, so it just occurred to me that I hadn't actually said the one thing that I was really intent on saying in this last little tirade here. Uh, this is not a soup, to be clear. Uh, Slippy Pot Pie is not a soup. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it because it's... I mean, it's kind of similar to chicken and waffles in that it's the interior of a chicken pot pie. Um, but not as thick. But it's, it's not as thick and it's, I don't know, it's, it's its own thing. But to be clear, it is not a soup. It is not a chicken noodle soup, which is what a lot of people have tried to tell me it is. And I'm like, no, chicken noodle soup is chicken noodle soup. This is slippy pot pie. It is different. So at this point, what we're gonna do is uh, add our potatoes because our vegetables are our vegetables are tender, um, and we are going to um, add our pot pie noodles. I'm gonna add my carrots because, like I said, these are already pre-cooked. And we're gonna add in our chicken back to this mix. And this is where we're gonna add our spices. So because I used bouillon in my making of the chicken, I am not adding salt. Actually, no, I am gonna add a little bit of salt because um, the vegetables need the salt, but you're gonna add turmeric. 
And of course, my mother was oh so clear with how much to add on that. Turmeric doesn't really pose any kind of flavor. It's usually used for coloring. And I don't remember this being yellow at all. So that's good. A couple twists of salt and a lot more pepper. Um, you could add parsley to this if you wanted to. Um, I would recommend using fresh parsley as opposed to dried. I'm out of parsley, so that's not gonna happen. Um, you're gonna go ahead and give everything a stir because you really don't want layers of noodles and potatoes and chicken and spices. And uh, you're gonna let this go until the potatoes and the noodles reach the doneness that you desire. So that means I have no idea how long I'm gonna cook this because I have no idea how long it's gonna take the noodles to cook because these are homemade noodles and um, I don't know. <laughs> They're a different shape than than normal and such, so we'll see. Um, I might need to add a little bit extra liquid to this because this is a lot. Um, if you, according to my mother, if you're gonna make this for a lot of people, you actually are going to add more potato to your mix than anything else. Um, because the tomato, the, Tomatoes? No, not tomatoes. You don't put tomatoes in this. Please don't put tomatoes in this. I will find you. I will haunt you and, you know, murder you in your non-Pennsylvania Dutch sleep. Um, potatoes. You, you use the potatoes because they're starchy, so they're going to add a bit more filling-ness to your, um, I guess it's kind of like a stew. It's kind of like chicken and dumplings. I mean, let's break it down. So it's kind of like chicken and dumplings, only you're using noodles instead of dumplings, um, which in my opinion are way better. So, um, no, Pennsylvania Dutch, there's a difference. So, um, yeah, so basically you're just gonna, like I said, cook it till it's done. But um, you're gonna use, uh, if you're making this for Let's see, what I have going on here, this is looking like it's probably gonna be somewhere between six and eight servings worth of a slippy pot pie. Um, if you need to make more than that, then add potatoes. Um, you can double batch it depending on how many people you're serving, but if you're serving that many people, um, were you my grandmother's family from the 1930s? Is really all I have to ask. She had like, what, nine siblings, I think? Ah, oh, God, I can't remember. She had a very, very large family. Um, I know I can remember off the top of my head, Aunt Violet, excuse me, Valet, um, because that's actually how it was spelled, Valet. Uh, Aunt Jean, Uncle Paul, and then there was Clarence and Jess, who I never knew because they died in World War II. Uh, Lynn and Loretta, who were twins, my grandma. And there was one other person I thought. I think she died in infancy. I'd have to look it up on Ancestry because I have it all written down there. But yeah, there were a lot of them. And uh, Laura, Laura and Loretta, not Lynn, Laura and Loretta. It was Loretta Lynn and Laura Bell. So um, yeah, I've got pictures from the 1930s World Fair. It's so cool. Anyway, um, we'll be, <laughs> this is stuff you don't care about, I know. We'll be back in a little bit once this is uh, cooked to perfection. And then we'll dish it up and we'll see how it compares to my mother's recipe. Which is. Which technically it is. My mother's All right, so our chicken pot pie, slippy pot pie, is done. So I'm going to move this over here to the table. Move my wine out of the way. And I want to show you that there is 
a lot of liquid in this, which is why when you serve it, you use a slotted spoon, you put it on a plate and you eat it with a fork because it is not a soup. It is a pasta dish and you use the amount of liquid that you use to cook your noodles and your potatoes. All right. Now, I did look it up. My grandmother was one of 13 kids from, what did we say, 1910, I think was when the first one was born, 1910. He died in 1910. Then the next one was born in 1911, and he died in 1911. Then the next one was born in 1912. 13, 15 was my grandmother. 17 on up to a while. Um, I think there were three children who died in infancy in my grandmother's family. So, um, yeah, she had a lot of, a lot of siblings in her family. Two of them died during World War II, like I had mentioned. Um, and, uh, well, I'm, I won't go into that. Cause like, I, I know how most of them died, but yeah. I won't go into that, it's depressing. So um, anyway, so this is Pennsylvania Dutch Slippy Pot Pie. When you serve it, it should be like that, okay? It is a pasta dish um, with chicken and vegetables and deliciousness and everything. And I don't really need to eat this right now because I know what it tastes like. It tastes delicious. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. There's a lot of information about my own personal family as well as Pennsylvania Dutch culture in general. And I understand that maybe not everybody's into that and that's cool. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't hit the thumbs down button, leave me a comment either way. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like. If you don't care about Pennsylvania Dutch culture and you care never to hear about it again, let me know. Probably won't take it into consideration, but hey, at least I know. So uh, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. And that way you know when all of my videos come out. If you are not one of my Patreon supporters, head over to patreon.com slash KWOS and sign up. If you hit the $5 level, you will get notified once a month for videos that I put out specifically for my patrons, like these lovely Pennsylvania Dutch uh, Slippy Pot Pie noodles we make that on film, you get to see cameraman Ken as well. So I mean, you know, win, win. And uh, so this is really tempting me because I am very hungry and this is my comfort food. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign off here and we'll see you next time.